Hey guys, now I'm going to give it back here for that video. Guys, today we're going ahead and taking a look at week 8 NFL DFS slate. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off right away, we start off with the most expensive quarterback on the slate, Patrick Mahomes. Then we got Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Tua, uh, Kirko. We have Stafford, Stroud, Lawrence, and then Prescott. It's going to be an interesting slate. Now, I will start off right away by saying I really, really, really like Lamar Jackson versus the Arizona Cardinals here. Um, the reason why is I think the Arizona could put up points on this Ravens defense. I know the Lions last week absolutely abysmal. It couldn't do anything. But the Cardinals are a weird team this year. Like, they are bad and they seem like they're tanking. But they're still a really good team for some reason. But at the same time, though, uh, I don't know. Again, like I said, you know, the Colts put up a lot of points for, on that Ravens defense. The Bengals did. I mean, we already know the Bengals this year have been kind of struggling. The Steelers didn't really. The Steelers had a defensive touchdown, and they also had a George Pickens beat Marlon Humphrey on a one-on-one -on -one play. The Browns couldn't put up any points against them. And then the Titans... It was all Derrick Henry. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and fade that. I'm going to fade Lamar Jackson. Even though he had a great week last week, I'm going to fade him. I'm fading Tua. I don't want to do anything against that New England Patriots defense. I mean, Josh Allen looked abysmal against them. So, Kirko versus Green Bay does interest me a tad bit. I mean, Russell Wilson actually looked serviceable versus um, that Green Bay defense. Uh, they actually were able to move the ball somewhat. But, you know what? I might go C.J. Stroud here versus Carolina. C.J. Stroud has not really been that great of a quarterback this year for DFS. But he does get Carolina this week. And Carolina's defense, well, I think that's probably the only thing they have left in their defense. Mm. Alright, I'm going to take a... I don't know which guy I want to go with this week. I might, I, I don't know, because like, again, I, what I'm looking here is now upside, and Str if Stroud was cheaper this week, I would go with Stroud, but then his price tag is 6300 I just can't see myself going for, I'm not going for Joe Burrow, I'm not going for Geno versus Cleveland's defense, heck no, Jordan Love interests me a tad bit just because Minnesota Vikings defense has been vulnerable this year, but then he has been looking absolutely atrocious as of lately. I guess with all the fact that all the 1-5 and five teams last week won, you know, we really don't know football at this point when it comes to who's going to be good, who's going to be good or bad. You know what? I'm going to go Lamar Jackson. I'm going to find myself getting back up here with an expensive price tag quarterback, and I think a lot of people probably will this week. Um, we're going to be compare, uh, connecting real fast with Zay Flowers. Give me... Odell did have a really uh, decent game last week. I don't really trust him moving forward. Nelson Aguilar also had a decent game last week. But I'm probably just going to go skinny stack when it comes to those two guys. I know Mark Andrews had a crazy great game. But yeah, I'm just going to go skinny stack on those two guys. And then buyback options this week. Zach Ertz will be going against Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith. So I don't really like that option. Uh, I know you like Hollywood Brown. I'm probably not going to do any buyback options in that game. Now let's switch over to defense real fast. Because I really do like the Browns versus the Seahawks. I know last week they got 16 points. But they did give up a lot of points to the Colts. But I'm not really too scared about that. So give me the Browns defense here in a nice bounce back week versus the Seahawks. I guess not really bounce back, but a nice week versus the Seahawks. Um, tight end, I'm kind of going a little bit cheaper here, and you're going to see why in a second. Um, Hayden, I don't... Not versus Houston defense. Houston's defense actually looks freaking amazing right now. Give me... Ugh. He's <laughs> good. Like I said, this slate is just so weird because there's so many guys. I'm like, you know what? This guy could have a really good game. But then I look at him, I'm like, I don't love him versus that matchup. Like, I don't like, you know, Evan Ingram versus Pittsburgh here. I don't think that's going to be, you know, a matchup I want to kind of target. I'm going to take Kyle Pitts and just hope Desmond Ritter doesn't suck this week. And they're going against Tennessee Titans. They actually have a do, they do have a solid defense, a uh, really great defensive line. But my hope is Kyle Pitts can get behind that defensive line and maybe catch a pass or two and 
get some yards down the field. 3,800 isn't too expensive. You saw the pass he caught last week. I don't know how he caught it. The ball was literally thrown to him, but it wasn't even thrown to him correctly, and he still caught the ball somehow and got a couple yards, which was amazing. Puka against Dallas is... Puka is honestly that good. Like, when it comes to a correctly price, I'm going to get Puka the nod here, but I'm also not going to give him the nod as in spending the money for him here. Um, let me go over to running back. I'm going to go for a cheaper running back this week. Um, for my first option here, what's Stevenson done this year? You know what? Versus Miami. I don't know. Could that Miami Dolphins defense? They looked vulnerable versus the um, Eagles. But there was also a lot of penalties that game that really bailed them out. And then he had two touchdowns, which he didn't really have much anything else outside of that. That Browns game was absolutely atrocious if you really broke it down and watched it. Um... Gus Bus does interest me because last week he got a lot of carries. And he's getting a lot of carries every single week. He's also going to get all the goal line carries, which I like. So, actually, give me Gus Bus. This lineup is kind of looking a little sus right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but we're kind of just makeshifting this. Again, it's going to be our first lineup of the week. So, we're going to be changing this throughout the week. Give me Tyler Lockett versus, um, versus Cleveland here. Actually, do not give me Tyler Lockett. I just realized their secondary is pretty dang good. Uh, Christian Kirk versus Pittsburgh. Here's the only reason why I'm going to go with this, right? Is because Pittsburgh, well, yes, they have a great defense. Their secondary is younger, okay? So they have Joey Porter Jr., who is their starting corner. He's not bad, but he's young, right? So he's developing. Their second guy is Patrick Peterson. He's their slot guy. That's the guy who probably going to be going against Christian Kirk here. He's older. He's not as fast, right? And then the other guy they have over there is Cam Sutton. And I'm plenty okay. Actually, no, not Cam Sutton. That's their safety. They have Levi Wallace, which I'm okay with Christian Kirk going against him too. So I actually do really like Christian Kirk this week. I also do like Calvin Ridley this week. Um, even though he's been having bad weeks, I'm actually okay if I you know, find myself going with him. I'm not going to go with him this week. But I wouldn't be against the idea of going with them this week. I do like Jordan Addison versus Green Bay. Uh, Jay Jess is going to see a lot of uh, Jahir Alexander. Uh, so that should give Jordan Addison a little bit more, you know, wiggle room to get open on some of those plays. Give me... You know, give me Mark Andrews. I'm going to take Mark Andrews in the slot here in the flex. And then I'm going to go ahead and take... Give me Brees Hall versus the Giants. I think the Giants, they're that abysmal. So, first look lineup. Let's break this down and kind of go back over it, okay? So, my home run plays, you know, who could go off is Lamar Jackson. I feel like Mark Andrews, if he goes off, he's probably going off, right? I think the defense for the Browns could definitely go off this week. And then everything else is kind of a hit or miss. And I don't really like structuring my lineups like this, especially for DFS, because it's like, well, yes, I might be very diversified when it comes to other lineups out there. You don't want to be to a point where you're kind of idiotic with your lineup, right? At the same time, you want to make your lineup diversi like diversified, not like, you know, copy and paste what everyone else has, because then you're not going to win money. But you want to at least have some logic in your lineup where you look at it and you say, okay, well, logically, how many points am I guaranteed and what's my upside, right? It's all risk reward. What's your upside? What's your bottom line? So my bottom line here is probably going to get at least, I would say, roughly 20 points from Lamar Jackson, right? Okay, 20 points. Gus Bus, he's a wild card. I mean, this guy could get 5 points. He could get 35 points, right? It really depends on the game flow of how this game's going to go. Um, now, he is, in nature, not really a receiving back, but because J.K. Dobbins is hurt, the only other guy, I mean, Justice Hill, is the receiving back. But other than uh, Justice Hill, they don't really have a running back out there on that team. They have Keaton Mitchell, who's a rookie undrafted player. But other than that, there's not really anyone too amazing. I might find myself getting off Gus Bus here for the said reason I just mentioned. I just don't really think he's going to be that productive. Um, I might take Alexander Madison here, but then my problem becomes I don't want too much value in this game. I don't think this Vikings... Packers game is going to be a high scoring affair and if it's not going to be a high scoring affair and I'm putting too much capital into it 
I'm going to get bit in the butt on the, on the return, right? So we got Brees Hall. Okay, he has really good upside. Christian Kirk, I think he has great upside. Um, and Kyle Pitts, I think he's kind of a hit or miss, right? So probably with our next look at this lineup, we're going to kind of shift around that. We're going to kind of maybe pivot off some of these guys. But we're going to do that in the next video. So make sure to like and subscribe down below. I'll see you guys next one. Peace.